actually is a lichen. So for a long time, people thought that they were plants because they don't move around like animals and they seem to grow and they're green. So they grow on things a bit like plants do sometimes, but they're not plants at all when you look at them microscopically. So what we tend to say is that a lichen is a symbiotic association of firstly a fungus, which is providing the structure of the lichen, and secondly a single-celled photosynthetic organism such as an alga. The photosynthesizing organism might also be a cyanobacterium and some lichens will have an alga and a cyanobacterium and then quite recently in the last few years it's been discovered that some lichens also have a second fungus as part of the integral part of the ecosystem. So they can be quite complicated organisms. So here we have a red oak tree, Quercus rubra. This tree, as you can see, is supporting a wide variety of different lichens, lots of different colors and textures. There's lots of lichens here, but we, we often categorize them very broadly into three types, so three growth forms. And the first growth form here is at the top, and this is showing what we call technically the fruticose growth form, which is sometimes called a shrubby growth form. You can see why it's called shrubby. It's going out bushy like a shrub. It is attached from one point to the substrate, to the bark, and then it branches out in all directions, taking, making up good use of the space available. The second uh, growth form is what we call folios or leafy. It has a flatter sort of look, like, like a leaf, flat, one side and then another side. So it has a top side and a bottom side. And if you get a knife, you can just, you can just get under that and reveal that it's got a bottom side like that. The last form that we can see on this tree is what we call crustose, or you could say crusty. They're growing directly onto the bark. There's no, really no underside. The, under, the underside is the bark in effect. So you can't peel it off. The only way you could remove it is by cutting the bark. So these crustose lichens can be really difficult to tell apart because um, they have generally fewer features than the folios or the fructicose lichens. Um, but the kind of features they have, some of them have apothecia, that's these uh, fruiting bodies that release the spores. Um, this one here is very distinctive, this is Graphis scripta. And it's so named because the, the, the apothecia form lines which resemble some kind of ancient script or writing. So sometimes it's good to get down on the ground in amongst the moss and leaves and see what's down here. And uh, quite often you'll find old logs and um, fallen branches and things. Um, and when you find habitats like that, quite often you find lichens like this. This is a cladonia. And as you can see, it forms these amazingly wonderful sort of gothic structures. These are called padisha, these bits that, that grow upwards from the substrate. And on the, on the tops of the padisha, there are these little brown blobs. These are called the apothecia, and these are the fruiting bodies which produce the spores from which the, the lichen fungus reproduces. Incredibly beautiful. Sometimes people ask me, what's the point of lichens, or what do they do? And I usually answer by saying something like, what's the point of anything? What do we do? But they do have, they do have a, a sort of a place in the ecosystem. Sometimes, sometimes they, they will, of course, by fix, be fixing carbon and nitrogen. And they're a home for lots of little creatures. Um, and there's even a small food chain which is completely reliant on lichens. Bark flies which eat lichens and then wasps that entirely predate on the, on the bark flies. Mostly they're just a source of really glorious biodiversity right here in our woodlands. <laughs>